Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this piano workout, we are going to explore the genre salsa or Latin piano style and look at a very common patterns which we are going to play in the left hand, namely the tresio, the clave, the song clave to be more specific. And alongside those patterns, we are going to bring in some of our usual piano left hand suspects which are arpeggios, broken chords, umpa style, maybe some drum like root and octave phrases in the left and in the right hand I'm going to give you a melody which I've composed a very simple melody on the G minor scale you could refer to this as either G natural minor or the G harmonic minor and then we are going to do a bunch of things to embellish the melody we'll add a turn to it we'll add some harmony and alongside the melody we are going to keep changing the, the Latin or the salsa patterns in the left hand and not only that we are going to do this over a chord progression which is going to be in sort of a 16 bar blues like phrasing structure okay so before we get started it'll be nice if you can get your pianos out and try to learn with me as I'm teaching because you have to play as I talk and also, consider getting a copy of the handwritten notes and our staff notation which are waiting for you on our Patreon page for just a monthly subscription where you'll get content for not only this lesson but also things we have been doing in the past and which we will continue to do in the future, right? So before we get started, it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. So first things off, we're going to learn the melody. It's on the G harmonic minor scale or the G natural minor scale I'm just going to play you G harmonic minor that's B flat E flat F sharp G while the natural minor has the 7 as flat okay so harmonically and melodically we are going to borrow ideas from this particular scale and it's the chords we are going to use throughout this lesson are the one chord which is G minor, G minor, G, B flat, D, C minor, which is the four chord, C, E flat, G, and then D minor, D, F, A. So it'll be along this one, four, five kind of routine. Okay. So let's now learn the melody and then bring the chords in. After we bring the chords in, we'll then bring the patterns in, which are going to be very traditional Latin piano style patterns. So I'll play you the melody first. So it's going to have two variations, the on variation and the off variation. On first. So divide your beat by four. That's generally what happens in these groovy genres. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, or maybe faster. One E and a two E and a three E and a, whatever it, whatever the case is, you have to divide by four. And a lot of your landing points will be on the off beats. It could be at the end, which is at the 50% mark of the beat. It could be at the E, which is at the 25% mark or the E, uh, which is at the 75% mark. So oh, back to the melody. That's the G minor melody. Okay, over the it goes well with the G minor chord. So let's get the hit points of the right hand. One E and a two E and a three E and a all on the beat. One E and a two E and a three E and a. So that's at the a. Uh. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and a. Uh. Lot of the e's uh's there, right? One e at the end of the bar. And then you wait with that G on the downbeat of the next bar, starting. And now if we do this in an off way. Just the third note is going to be. Anticipated as we call it. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a lot of offbeats there. So let's get the off one. Okay, and there's a lot of gap in that second bar, isn't it? So let's fill that up with a lick or what we call in classical music as a turn or an appoggiatura. So two, three, four. 
4 at the beat 4 you're going to do ta da 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 ta da 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 so taki ta tak so triple it semi and non triplet mm the semi quavers basically so tan ch tan ch tan ch tan tan ta da 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 2 and a 3 and a 4 4 taki ta tak so how do i do the triplet run ta da 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 ta da 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 just using the neighbor tones ta da 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 okay you want to figure it figure this out and relax your hand otherwise it's going to be tough to if you push your shoulder or your arm to play each note it's impossible to play so you need to use your forearm a lot you have to use your forearm and relax your wrist if you want to if you think about it it feels obvious that when you play the piano you play with your entire arm but that will be counterproductive if you want to play a thing as fast as this your arm is actually going to defeat the process so you'll have to play it more with your forearm and your wrist needs to be relaxed you're not your yes you're using your fingers but you don't want to also play too flat fingered you don't want to play of course crooked fingered but flat fingered is also a problem and you don't want to drop your wrist too much because by dropping it you're going to make render it as useless so keep it active and let your forearm take the hit okay and move your wrist up and down little bit so that the entire energy is distributed across the arm okay so coming back to the tune lick so as you can see i'm also adding some harmony which is nice which could be thirds and we call these as tenor thirds so that would be upper third but the upper third kind of defeats the soprano the melody line so instead of playing high take that high third and bring it down below so so that could work again relax your hand and to get an exact idea of what to play it's important that you map it out in a, a piece of paper so write down the g minor scale and under that write down the thirds you can refer to my handwritten notes to to get a better idea okay it also helps to write the notes in a circle so then the thirds would be even so you write the scale in a circle and you will find the thirds very easily because it's kind of like a skip one play one scenario and then the uh, the scale in a line linearly under that you write down the thirds and you can map it you should also probably look at the thirds from the perspective of white and black keys so white key black key or black key white key so you get a nice shape while you play the piano you're imagining you're seeing it in your mind's eye as they say and you will not make mistakes okay so the tune the whole tune with the tu- with the thirds and the embellishment at the end slowly and now let's do the off beat melody which is just the third note displaced slightly and a two or anticipated as we call it and a 2 and a 3 that's on and off don't lose your left hand left hand continues to give a pulse for now since i'm in this world of 16th notes there's so many other hit points which are favorable for the performance so sometimes you might find in this tutorial also that i might be drifting towards one beat little before or later but that's i think allowed for this genre so you can do things like you know you can kind of make everything delayed or anticipated but for our notation we have two versions and then we have 
that's the off one but if you're taking time to land on the on off bar 2 which anyways is pretty tough you might as well just delay it a little bit and it sounds uh, musically cool as well isn't it there we go so instead of doing i'm doing okay so the pulse for now is in the left hand so before we get to the left hand patterns let's walk this particular melody through or transpose the melody to the the other two chords which i mentioned we are going to learn we are going to learn uh, over the four chord which is the c minor and the five chord which is the d minor so over c minor the same melody if you break it down it's 3 2 1 7 1 2 1 3 2 1 so you just need to transpose it along the interval of the chord so now the chord is c the root is c so la da 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 versus la da 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 okay you can even do this by ear you don't need a lot of theory as long as you're on the scale it should be fine so melody on c would be versus g C again, C minor, and let's move to the D minor. Try and guess it. Play it. La. You want to start with the third, and then it goes in autopilot. La da 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 da. La da da da. Okay, so. That's actually off the scale, but it sounds nice. And then don't forget the lick. So for C minor, the lick would be, or the embellishment, or the turn phrase would be C minor. And then I'm doing la 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 G A G F sharp G. Could also consider, but that sounds a bit uh, different, so to speak, because you're going to the. Minor second of the G scale, which is not so pleasant. So you could consider, or sometimes I do that by mistake, but leave it in the recording because it kind of works. So C minor, lick, and then coming to the melody on D minor. That's la da re 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 re. So also observe, I'm adding the respective tenor thirds or the lower thirds to each melody, like I did for earlier. So and that's the turn for D. I'm starting on the pa or the fifth. So. and the whole chord progression would be g minor na 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 still g minor ta da da g minor na 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 g minor four g minors na 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 two c minors only la na 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 g minor na 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 now la d minor Stay on D for two. C minor. Stay again for two. G minor. Stay on G minor for four. So that adds up to sixteen bars, isn't it? So G minor, G minor, G minor, G minor, C minor, C minor, G minor, G minor, D minor, D minor, C minor, C minor, G minor, G minor, G minor, G minor. I hope I got that right, but you can see the handwritten notes where it'll be written down easily. Okay, so come, let's try and play this entire melody without any uh, stuff in the left hand, just observing the chord notes, and let's see how it goes. minor 
still C minor coming back G minor going to D minor back to C minor ending on G minor the tonic chord same lick okay so that's the entire right hand for you the melody and the chord movement now to make it a bit salsa like you heard in the in the intro video So you're going to keep the same melodic phrase in the right hand but now these left hand patterns are going to make it very authentic. First off, you can look at the thresio. The thresio feels like this. I'll first clap it out. Ta 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 ta. ta. So the first thing you want to do is ta 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 ta. Keep the thresio I guess in this case I've evolved a punching technique. You could try whatever works for you. You could even clap or kick or I don't know what else. So tunk 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 You could also do do it on your body with your leg doing the pulse. So if your the leg or your your foot will be doing the pulse. Left hand's doing the thresio, and then slowly bring in the right hand. So keep that thresio going, and for your information, it'll be the hit points would be. One year, a two year, and a three year, a four year, and a one year, a two year, and a three year, a four year, and a very popular. Okay, for further study of the thresio, we leave a couple of videos in the description. After the lesson, you could probably head over and learn those. So this is your traditional thresio. Okay, one year, a two. So I'm going to start with this, and there are two things you could consider in your left hand, or a few things rather. First off. is dissipate the pitches it could be low pitch high pitch high pitch you know instead of doing like what i'm doing with my hands ta 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 it's just one pitch one unique pitch so with the left hand on the piano you could divide it sort of like what a bass guitarist or what a drummer would do in the case of drums you have kick and snare in the case of a bass player a bass player would ideally play the root and the octave or the root and the fifth so i'm just going to do root and octave and go down on the piano to the g and do the thresio hits which are one e and two and two so let's start with this maybe you want to sing the melody first na 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 go to the the next chord c minor then okay so basically you'll have this pattern going through the chord roots of each of the chord if you're playing in the root octave style you could also do some of your favorite arpeggio patterns or just think of it as i want to now break up this chord as arpeggios and go something like traditional arpeggio would be which is nice but this kind of holds back the groove you know even though it's you know so popular for all our piano music right we use this almost all the time but for this lesson we'll have to modify it slightly on the thresio hit points which are you could do root third fifth that's your drum and bass kind of thing Dun dun 
dum 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 bum 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 okay and if you're more intermediate on the piano if you're if you want to stretch your hand a little bit more holding the pedal cuz otherwise actually you can do it even without the pedal but it'll sound better with the pedal on so da re ra ta ta re so that will be 1 5 and the 10th voicing okay it's also what we call as spread voicing we have a playlist on spread voicing where we've looked at it from a theoretical and a practical perspective do check it out in the description that's 1 5 and 10 which is nothing but the three played up the octave let's see how that goes what pretty much what i played in the intro video tresio okay you can do these arpeggios you can also break up your chords we have a traditional pattern an umpa as they call it pa umpa you can do root third fifth or you can do root third fifth come down to the fifth is already nice what if we do the thresio it'll be even more groovier there we go so and if you thought this was not dancey enough you can then do you can do your pulse or their down beats toggle between 1 5 1 5 1 5 sounds nice in the lower octave as well pum 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 up to you so simple thresio broken could be 1 up up down up up okay could break it like this or even more simple could just be is already groovy you want to take it to the next level toggle with the fifth tum pa tum and you want to make it even more interesting bring the down beats into play tum chuk 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 tum g d kick kick so it becomes more sort of caribbean dance and last but not least is a very important salsa pattern called the song clave clave is like the essence of the groove we have in this genre so it's important to know these claves and practice them against things like the melody which you're doing in the right hand the song clave would take the thresio just a slight bit extra by going to two phrases a three phrase and a two phrase so this will be the three is to two song clave which sounds like cha 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 ta ta So the first three is actually the thresio, but to make the thresio a bit more interesting and not so predictable, there's so many songs out there which actually, you know, take this uh, same pattern. or maybe so let's put the song clave into perspective with this particular melody so g minor can be played as so i like the 
the busyness and the laziness coming together with the three is to do the three part is that excitement and the two part is the calm because the beat structure is such that you're playing on the on beats or on the ends you could say that's the pattern melody That's the last job I have for you in this lesson. So, in in summary, if we just go in reverse, the left hand patterns are thresio. We can do that as arpeggios, close arpeggios, spread arpeggios, um, broken chords. Then we have that dance, the thresio, where you have a downbeat focus. Then we have the clave. song clave in its 3 is to 2 formation okay all this over the chord progression the 16 bar phrase using g minor its fourth c minor its fifth d minor and the melody has been fairly consistent it's transposed itself but the melody has two interesting ornaments one is the use of thirds in bar 1 and the the lick or the turn at the end just to make it more interesting then we transposed it okay if you want to listen to some of this style further i leave you a few of my own compositions or what we call as riffs we even have a website so you could head over there and perhaps listen to some of these salsa inspired compositions of mine so hope you found the lesson useful as always the notes are waiting for you on our patreon page including the staff notation and this is jason zack from nathaniel do consider hitting the subscribe button the bell if you haven't already and if you'd like a more structured approach to learning if you'd like to join us for a 6 month semester at Nathaniel School of Music consider heading over to our website and filling up a form and our course advisor will reach you soon cheers and catch you in the next one